Hi guys, this is Lena at GradeLink again. Thanks for joining me uh, in the financial section. This is video three. Uh, the third step in setting up your financial area is to configure your billing cycles. Uh, so if you're still on the coding page, you actually want to go up now to your billing tab at the very top of your screen. When you click on your billing tab, what you're going to see is a list of the months that fall within um, the session that we created a little while ago. So what you'll notice here is that there's a little green asterisk in this search bar next to session. That's an indication to me that I have multiple school year sessions configured in the financial area. So if I click in this search menu, it's going to pull up a yellow pop-up, and I can decide which um, values or which session I would like to view. So since I'm working on setting up for the 2014-2015 school year, and those are the months that I'm interested in at this point, I'm going to place a check mark next to that year and then click Apply. What that does is it pulls up uh, a month for each session that's for each um, for, for the entire span of the 2014-2015 year. And remember, I said that the receivables open from starts in March. And so even though the school year doesn't necessarily start in March, I do see that available here as a month within this session. And it spans all the way past the end of the school year into August. Um, so a couple important things to note on this page. If you click on a particular month, the information about that month will pop up on the left half. And what you'll see is a period status drop-down menu. By default, all of the months are set to pending when you first build a school session. And pending is how you want to leave them while you're, if you're, for example, entering in, um, uh, let's say that you started in June, but you need to actually go back and input transactions from March and April and May, it would probably make sense to leave these as pending because if a status is pending, you'll be able to go into your financial area and input uh, transactions for students from those, those months that may be in the past, for example. But um, once you actually are up and running with the financial section, part of your maintenance is going to be opening and closing these billing cycles each month. So to open a billing cycle, again, we just have it highlighted. And then on the right half of the page in the period status drop-down menu, I would change the billing cycle from pending to open. And then I would click Save. Okay. Once a cycle is open, I have a little bit more um, options available to me on this page. One of those options is the Post or Refresh, refresh Lunch Charges button. And uh, we'll go into that in a later training video that's going to allow me to post certain charges into this March month. Um, another important item on this page is there's a Transactions From and Transactions through date. And so um, what you want to do is decide when you're going to make statements available to parents and then adjust these dates accordingly. So let's say, for example, that I want to make statements available to parents, um, I don't know, maybe the last week of the month because perhaps their tuition is going to be due on the first of each month. So if I want to make sure that the, the March charges are available to parents ahead of time, what I might do is change this transaction through to maybe the end of March. I'm going to click Save here. You'll notice that when I change the end date of this billing cycle, the start date of the next billing cycle adjusted. So for this April billing period, I see now that it actually starts on um, the 22nd. 
And in this case, that's actually what I want because I intend to push out the March statement to parents around the end of March. And then any last minute charges or payments that I receive from parents in March, I'm going to actually apply onto the next statement in April. So I'm, I'm going to stagger these dates a little bit here. So I might change the transactions through on April, move that up a week. So I go through and make these adjustments. Again, you, you don't have to move it up by a week. Um, it's just my recommendation because if you intend to publish these statements a week ahead of time, you'll need to close these billing periods out in order to push the statements live. Um, and that brings up another important point on this page is that if a status is open, it means that you can make transactions in the ledger. You can put, put charges into the student's account. You can enter in payments that you may have received from a parent. At the end of the month, or in this case on the 21st, you want to come in here and change the period status to closed. I'm going to click Save. Once it's closed, then you would open up April by clicking on April. I would change the period status from pending to open now because I'm ready to input transactions for April. And then I would continue to use my financial section in the month of April. You can only ever have one period open at a time. So the idea is that at the end of each month, you come in here and close the previous month, and then you open up the next month. Once the period is closed, then you'll be able to run a statement for the parents. So um, we'll cover this a little bit more when we talk about running a statement. But for now, uh, when you're getting set up, you want to go through and make sure that the, um, the date ends when you want to make statements available to parents. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, stay tuned for part four.